This is a Ducati Supersport from the 90s. It's my 1996 Ducati 900 Supersport and it's a very, very pretty bike. But what's it like to live with? So 1991, the first of this model came out uh, and they took the world by storm. Um, the, the sales were very, very strong, particularly in the United States, which is what they were targeting. But let's, let's not kid ourselves. At the time, Ducati was still a bespoke manufacturer. They weren't churning out the numbers that the Japanese equivalents were at the time in terms of units. So even, even though it's not a limited edition run, they didn't make that many of them. In fact, in 1996, when this one was manufactured, there were 1,000 worldwide red, full-fairing 900 SS units made. And that seems, that seems unbelievable, but it's, it's true. So what is there to like and dislike? Um, obviously, the looks. It's, it's a beautiful, stylish motorcycle. And uh, I particularly like the full fairing model, and I love the way that they've um, designed this section here. The whole that whole full side fairing to me just looks like um, flames ripping through the air. So the engine, L twin, 904cc, 9.2 to 1 compression ratio, 98 mm, 92 millimeter bore, 68 millimeter stroke. Claimed to have the 84 horsepower, uh, which equates to 70 something at the rear wheel, which isn't, you know, by today's standards, isn't a lot of horsepower. Um, however, when you consider this bike only weighs 180 kilos, like it's not a heavy bike. The suspension, 41 millimeter Showa upside down cartridge forks that have adjustable preload, rebound, and dampening. The rear is a shower. Um, Mono shock. It's got a progressive link design. It has adjustable preload, compression, and rebound dampening as well. This one has an aluminium um, swing arm, which uh, apparently on some models had a habit of cracking. Uh, I haven't had any issues with this particular bike, but that apparently has happened. And the other area where some of the earlier models cracked was around the steering stem. Uh, on the on the trellis frame. In fact, it was a factory recall. But this bike hasn't suffered anything there. The American market in, 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 the, in the mid 90s, sales were starting to fall away a bit on the 900 SS. Um, the Monster was becoming popular and the series of Ducati Superbikes was also um, taking sales away from the 900. So they had a bit of a go at it again. We got a, an extra oil gauge, uh, sorry, an oil temperature gauge on the dash. They released the SSSP model, sports production model in America, and that received a carbon front guard and a few other uh, nice bits and pieces. The bike does have a few issues though. I mean, if, you think it, if you're thinking of buying one of these and you're used to riding modern sports bikes, they're totally different. This is not a modern sports bike. One of the key differences is you got to ride it. It's very ropey. So, in fact, below 3,000 RPM, this bike makes no sense. It's very ropey on the throttle. Um, it's quite harsh. It steers very, very sharply because it's got very little trail. They have a 25 degree rake and about 100 millimetres of trail, 104 maybe. Um, and they don't have a lot of steering lock, so you find yourself quite often you'll, you'll go to turn the bike at low speed when you're manoeuvring to park or and uh, you'll hit the steering stop and it'll take you by surprise a bit and I've nearly dropped the thing. 
um, a couple of times or if you choose the wrong angle when you're coming out of a driveway trying to turn onto a, onto a street or a road you can find yourself on the wrong side of the road because there just isn't enough steering angle there so there is that um, but yes they like to be ridden they don't want to be pussyfooting around because they're so choppy and ropey at low at low speeds um, if you're coming up to a, an intersection, a roundabout or a slow corner and you get off the throttle, it, it's almost instant and, and pitches the bike forward and upsets the bike so you don't, you've got to be, you got to be able to ride it. You want to pick, you want to be slowed down and the bike set up correctly before you get to the corner and ride it through. It's what it's designed to do and it loves it. But being light has a few disadvantages too. It does not like gusty crosswinds, particularly these full fairing models. It will, I've been riding across places like Midway Point, across the Tasman Bridge and certain sections of road where we have a lot of wind gusts here and the bike feels like it's almost at, you know, 20, 30 degrees lean angle, um, trying to combat or counter the, um, the crosswinds. So there is that. They shake themselves to bits. You've got to keep an eye on fasteners around the bike, windscreens, fairings, this hugger came loose the other day, um, the, the rear wheel hugger came loose, all the, all the, I noticed all the bolts were loose while I was washing it. Um, the brakes on it are very, very good, so we've got 320mm Brembo rotors at the front with four piston calipers, Brembo calipers, Brembo hardware on the handlebars, so the master cylinders are all Brembo. The rear is a 245mm single disc with an underslung Brembo 2 piston caliper and um, it has more than enough stopping power. Then there's the elephant in the room. No, not that elephant. Yeah, that elephant. The clutch, the dry clutch. When I first purchased the bike, it came with uh, and was fitted with a carbon fibre, actual carbon fibre, not a printed thing. It was real carbon fibre, open uh, clutch cover. And it's really cool and you see it spinning and yeah, I've got a dry clutch, but my God, the noise of the thing. I couldn't stand it, so I ended up putting the factory cover back on there to shut it up a little bit. Um, a lot of Ducati guys love that, each to their own. Um, I don't mind it, but you know, I can quite happily live without it, thank you very much. The mirrors, the mirrors give me the shits. They're badly positioned, so you only see your forearms, and they they get very loose in the um, in the swivel joint, and uh, you can strip back the the, uh, the rubber boot or the whatever it's made of boot, and um, get to the fastener and try and tighten it up and pinch them up a little bit. But these are actually broken inside the. The pl plastic has just fractured and they've, they've come apart, so I don't like these mirrors. Ergonomically sitting on the bike, I find it pretty good really. Um, these clip-ons are quite high. I've actually pushed them down, lowered them a little bit compared to where they were when I first got the bike. Beautiful white face analog gauges. Very easy to read. 
funny increments on this phenomena where you're sort of used to 20 km an hour increments on the bold so 60, 80, 100, 120 etc this has got 30 that can make it a little bit you know like because I don't ride this bike every day uh, and my other bikes etc have got the different increments on my car when you doing, want to be doing 80 kilometres an hour you quite often sit there with the needle on the 90 and you just got to watch that these indicator lights here uh, on the dash these uh, warning lights you can't see very well because there's a GoPro in the way hang on beep there we go very dull um, they're not too bad at night and <laughs> that's <laughs> the saying something if you say that the lights are not too bad at night so this, this one here is telling me that my headlights on um, there's also uh, an indicator or turn, turn signal warning lamp uh, to let you know you've got your turn signal on there's oil pressure of course there's um, there's a, there's a red one for the kickstand, but there's no safety switch. It's a case of... There's no rider, there's no rider aids and uh, no safety systems on this bike other than the, the you know, just the brakes, etc. And the, the safety system's in here. So you've got to use it. Don't ride off with your side stand down. It will let you, it will let you start the bike, you let you put it in gear, release the clutch and ride off. Because you're a grown up and you should know. Just another point, the side stand's very long, so the bike does sit up quite vertical. Uh, almost, almost vertical when it's on the side stand on solid ground. And you just got to be aware of that because um, particularly down here in Tassie where it can get quite windy, if you've got it facing the wrong way and it's sitting up a little too high gets a gust of wind it could fall over the seat's comfortable everything's where you want it I, yeah I, I don't find it at all uncomfortable to ride There's some bikes that you can ride with a lot of confidence, like my XS 1100, I can tip that into a corner and know it's going to hold. This bike here has incredibly good traction and will drive through corners beautifully, but if there's any hint of gravel or anything on the road, it just goes sideways. It uh, is so light that you just don't have that, um, that, that downward pressure on your contact patch that when you're trying to ride it. So. I've noticed that a lot. It will um, it will shift around on the road, a bit like a dirt bike, um, if you do come across any gravel or anything in the corner. So you've got to be prepared and be, be ready for that. There is a, the maintenance question as well. Uh, I found that everything on this bike is no different to maintaining any other bike, with the exception of the valve train. So yeah, that's a bit of a pain in the neck. Yes, it can be expensive when you've got to buy shims, etc., because they aren't cheap. Um, changing the, I found that changing the belts on, on the cam belts is quite simple. Um, it's easy enough to measure your clearances to do those, those checks, but when it actually comes to replacing the, the shims in there, um, it, it can be quite a, quite a job and is probably best left to 
the professionals. The rest of the bike is very easily maintained. The airbox sits under the tank, this tank's on a hinge, it hinges up, you remove the seat and open the tank up and the battery, the igniters, coils, um, everything is all there ready for you. It's very, it's very easy to access. Um, and everything else is just everything else. You've just you've got brake calipers, you've got brake master cylinders, you've got wheel bearings, you've got chains and sprockets, you've got all of those things that you need to maintain, that you need to maintain on any other bike, and it's no different on the Ducati. So I guess that's um, that's what it's all about. It's about managing your expectations. I love this bike. It's fun to ride. It's it's not a wheel stand through the gears um, Japanese sports bike but it's just a whole other level of enjoyment I guess it's very visceral the bike shakes and rattles um, but it sounds amazing it feels good underneath you it just it is just a beautiful thing and um, I would never discourage anyone from buying one however if uh, you do, you've got to go in with your eyes wide open and not think you're getting onto a GSX-R or a CBR or a y, uh, an R1 uh, even, or even a, a Jixxer or anything from the era. It's just, they're just totally different. But anyway, I hope you enjoyed having a look at my 900SS. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe and comment and I'll catch you next time on Andy's Motorcycle Obsessions. Bye for now.